Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome you to this online service of worship for Sunday, September 5th, 2021 for Riverside United Church, an affirming community of faith in London, Ontario. My name is Dave Exley. I'm the lead minister for Riverside, and I hope if you're catching this on the day of its release that your holiday weekend is filled with laughter and love. I'm grateful that you've decided to tune in to our service of worship today, and I trust that you'll be blessed by the words that we share, the songs that we sing in the service today. But today we do begin a a new sermon series, A Good Life, Wisdom for Living Well, as we explore some of the wisdom passages of the Hebrew Bible from Proverbs and a few other Old Testament sources. The hope is that through this service, we will hear God's voice speaking to us, guiding us toward that kind of life that mirrors the goodness of God. I want to highlight uh, this morning most especially that uh, as we've shared the last few weeks or so, we will be returning to the building for in-person worship uh, as one option uh, for your Sunday morning experience. And that will happen one week from the release of this video on September 12th. If you do want to join us for worship in the building for one of our two worship services, you'll need to register later this week on Thursday uh, to ensure that we have space for you on Sunday morning and to ensure that we do all the contact tracing that we need to do as mandated by the government. You can join us for our contemporary service at 8.44 a.m. or for our traditional service at 10.30 that Sunday morning and the Sunday mornings following that. And we will also be continuing to release these special service videos for those who choose to participate from home in the weeks to come. For more information, uh, make sure to subscribe to our email list by visiting our website, riverside.on.ca slash enews. You can sign up there. Uh, That will give you all the up-to-date information on what's happening uh, with our return to worship and many other things happening in the life of Riverside United Church. But in this critical time, we continue to urge you, all of you, to do your part to help us get back to normal in our world, to get back to that place where we can return fully to our space of worship, return fully uh, with our loved ones and all those friends that we've made over the years and those new friends that we hope to make. Make sure if you haven't already, get vaccinated. Make sure you get your second dose as well if you've not already done so. Continue to mask up. That's an important piece. Even though you've been vaccinated, we need to continue to mask up. Practice social distancing and follow the health and safety guidelines of the province. Stay tuned. Uh, for everything that's going on and all the changes that are occurring within our world. We can get through this together. But giving thanks for the gift of today, let us open our service of worship in song. Love is the touch of Is 
A reading from Proverbs 22. A good reputation is better than much wealth. High esteem is better than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord made them both. Those who show injustice will harvest evil. The rod of their fury will come to an end. Happy are generous people because they give some of their food to the poor. Don't steal from the poor, because they are poor. Don't oppress the needy in the gate. The Lord will take up their case and press the life out of those who oppress them. May the Lord bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Each and every day, we're bombarded with messages from advertisers and corporations that attempt to, to paint a picture of what a good life looks like. A good life is, is early retirement. A good life is winning the lottery and, and buying the home of your dreams. A good life is beautiful hair with volume. A good life is a diversified investment portfolio and so on and so on and so on, we're told. Billions of dollars are spent each and every year by advertisers and companies in an effort to understand what we want above all else in this life. What do we want? We want a good life. The problem is that all these messages we get bombarded with are, are designed to do one thing and one thing alone, to get us to buy a product, to keep us on the hamster wheel of consumption. And so I can't help but but ask the question, if we were able to tune out the cacophony of advertising noise in our world, that which we're exposed to each and every day, and tune into another voice, God's voice, what would that voice tell us about living a good life? Well, our sermon series for September is designed to do just that to help us silence the noise of our consumeristic society and to turn up the volume on God's message of hope and new life, to tune into what God has to tell us through the prophets, the stories of the Hebrew Bible from wisdom of the Old Testament. The good news is that God doesn't have a product to sell us. God doesn't limit the good life to, to VIP club members, early adopters. The good life isn't something beyond our reach or available only after life on earth comes to a close. The good life, the beautiful life that God wants us to enjoy, is available now. And unlike the good life that advertisers attempt to sell us, this good life is not scarce. Only available to, to insiders and early adopters, it is found in abundance. And when we lean into that good life, it will only benefit those around us in addition to ourselves. It will benefit the wider world. And so, as we begin this sermon series today for September, let's listen for God's voice as we ponder a good life, wisdom for living well. And friends, let us pray. O oh, creative God, source of all beauty, you give light to the soul. Open our hearts as we listen for your word. Open our minds as we dream with you. Reveal your life-giving truth that comforts and disturbs us through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, as a child, I can remember asking my parents how they chose my name. Through our conversation, I discovered that the popularity of the name David at the time wasn't the primary reason that my mother and father chose that name. But like most parents, my folks wrestled with many names before finally settling on my name. A common problem seemed to emerge in their process as they debated all the possibilities. As an elementary school vice principal, my father had numerous encounters with students who well, let's just be kind and say, didn't leave a good impression on him. And so, consequently, any time a name was suggested by my mother that was not a good one in my dad's mind, my dad would instantly go to that place where he'd think about perhaps a troublesome youngster 
with that particular name and would quickly cross it off the list. Either my dad didn't want to jinx me with that name, or he just simply wanted to forget those less than well-behaved children from his work life. David's were either the best behaved children in my dad's school, or at the very least, they were the least troublesome ones. And so I got named David. Either way, the name stuck. I'm now, to quote a song that has followed me and will continue to follow me for the rest of my life, I am one of the Daves you know, you know. Some of us are David. Most of us are Dave. We all have our own hands, but we come from different moms. Some of you will get that. Well, the opening line from Proverbs 22 that we just heard this morning in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible reads like this. It says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. The Common English Version puts it a little differently, stating a good reputation is better than much wealth. Whatever way you translate uh, this particular passage, it's clear that the writer of Proverbs is inviting us all to pursue something other than riches, something other than the stuff we, incum- we accumulate on this earth. This isn't simply about surnames and given names. The wisdom writer is inviting us to concern ourselves with our character, to be thoughtful and kind, to make wise decisions, to be humble to fill everything we do with justice. All these choices will build up a good name, a good reputation for us. In the passage, we we hear words like justice and generosity. We're told that the, the rich and the poor are both made in the image of God. In other words, one is not placed above the other in God's eyes. This was certainly different from what most people said during that time and certainly different from what many of us believe. Even though those beliefs may not be on the surface, they may be buried deep within, there is a sense that God somehow blesses some within our world and curses others. I can't help but wonder as I read this passage from, or these selections from Proverbs 22, I can't help but wonder if the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, that story Jesus tells in the Gospel of Luke, was maybe perhaps used as a meditation, a a teaching story by Jesus in a sermon where perhaps he was reflecting on Proverbs 22. For there are so many common links between those two passages of Scripture that it seems possible, if not likely, that Jesus told that parable as a way of supporting this passage of wisdom literature. In that parable, we get a vision of how God's realm works in relation to our realm. In the story Jesus tells, we see two men living at opposite ends of our world's divide. One man, the rich one, enjoys all the riches that this world has to offer, while the other man, Lazarus, lives with next to nothing, to the point that even the desperate dogs in the street take pity on him as he lay outside the gates of the rich man's compound. In our realm, Lazarus is invisible to the rich man and others. It's not until he's in God's realm, when we get that vision of the afterlife, that the rich man is able to even name Lazarus. In God's realm, we see the world turned upside down. The name of the rich man is not known in God's realm, but Lazarus' name is. These two passages, the one from Proverbs and this story that Jesus tells from Luke, they mesh together so well. Listen again to the phrases from Proverbs 22. A good reputation is better than much wealth. Those who sow injustice will harvest evil and don't oppress the needy at the gate. The two passages of Scripture invite us to place God's priorities above our own. We're invited to step into the world that God dreams of and see the goodness that flows not in a singular direction, but a goodness that flows with abundance to all creation, to all people, to all the world. 
So many people in our world end up getting lost in other priorities. They end up neglecting to remember that calling that the Creator makes on each and every one of our lives. So many of us, we, we get lost in things like partisan politics and we can only see through that lens. Others get lost in the pursuit of wealth and the accumulation of, of stuff. Some fall into the trap of climbing the many ladders of this world, corporate ladders, social ladders. And when we open our eyes to the truth, however, we see that the powers of this world, they tend to draw us toward the rich man pursuits, often at the cost of trampling over the Lazaruses of this world. In an increasingly divided world, we need to hear God calling our name. We need to hear God invite us to open ourselves to something larger than the world we live in today. The question for us is this, do we want to make a name for ourselves in God's realm or one of the other realms of this world? I share the name David with many people. There's a large circle of Daves that share a connection with me. But for as big as that circle is, it pales in comparison to the connection I share when you look at the meaning of my name. The meaning of my name further expands that circle of connection to all people, to all creation. For the name David, as some of you know, means beloved. Beloved. This is the name that God calls all of us, not just the Daves we know. We are all beloved of God. No one can take that name away from us, that good name. No matter who you are, no matter what your parents named you at birth or, or what name you claimed later in life, there is a name that you were given by God before every other name. And that name is Beloved, you are beloved of God. We are beloved of God. And so, all you who bear that name, you're invited to, to help others to, to hear that good name that they've been given. It's a name that is worth more than anything this world has to offer us. It is a name that can change and, and transform us, challenge us, Move us in the direction toward God. Let that name take hold of you. When it does, you'll see that it's worth more than anything any advertiser or corporation can offer you. While the world wants to name you things like consumer or reduce your living to other labels that divide us into smaller tribes, God is inviting us, all of us, to discover our place in something larger, something more beautiful. With all creation, we are given the good name, Beloved, called that by the one who is love. The great writer Richard Rohr says, spirituality is much more about unlearning than learning. The world has given us many names, Names that box us in. Names that attempt to erase that original name that God gave us. But as beloved children of God, we need to unlearn those names that, that cover over that original names. Names that we place on ourselves. Names that others have placed on us. When we do that, when we do that unlearning, we can set down our worldly things and begin to follow in the way of Christ. As God's beloved, our primary goal is to help others claim that good name, to hear God's voice of love calling them away from the other pointless pursuits of this world. So friends, hang on to that good name that God has given you. Hang on to that today and let it inspire you as you walk into an unknown tomorrow. Amen. And let us pray. Listening God, hear our prayers as we come before you. Hear the ones who are crying with pain in their heart. Hear the ones who are weeping with grief, 
long into the night. You're the ones who are sobbing in their loneliness. Loving God, heal their pain, restore their lives, mend their broken hearts. Leading God, lead us through the dark valleys, lead us through the troublesome times, lead us to our home with you. God, teach us to listen to your voice, that we may hear the cry of the needy and respond. Teach us to love, that we may offer care that brings others to you for healing. Teach us to lead with your vision so that we will not lead others blindly through life. O gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the way in which you call us beloved, for the way in which you invite us to co-create within this world with you. And so help us as we pray for ourselves, praying that we might be faithful co-creators, that love might grow through us, that joy might be found in abundance through the work that we do within this world. Oh God, forgive us when we fail to do so. Guide us and transform us so that we might do what you call us to do in this world. And gracious God, as we pray for ourselves, so too we pray for others, lifting up to you all those people and places that are on our hearts this day, in this time of silent prayer. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. And now we turn to you to lift up the words of that ancient prayer that you taught us to pray through the one, Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Friends, as we close our service of worship today, I hope you hear that voice of love calling you today, remembering that good name that was given to you even before you were born. Beloved, that is your name, the name that the one who is love gives you. And friends, in the days ahead, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of God's Spirit. Go in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Go this day. Be at peace. Amen.